seen on the DVD is called Albert's Curse. Pastor Pete, you got to understand, it was very powerful because for the first time, Celia had gotten sick of being sick. She, she'd gotten tired of being tired and she got mad with being mad. So Celia sat at the kitchen table for the first time. She got fed up with being fed up and she sat there after Albert had pushed her to her limit. And, and she looked Albert in the face and said, Albert, you know what? I'm sick of you pushing me around. His sug looked over at Celia trying to figure out what she was getting ready to do. She looked at Albert and said, Albert, I'm leaving you because I'm better than this. But Albert looked at Celia and did what most church, church folk do, Bishop. He looked at it and said, what do you mean you leaving me for something better? Don't you know that you're skinny? Don't, 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 don't you touch your neighbor and say, he ain't talking about you, he talking about Celia. Say amen. I mean, well, don't, don't you know that you're skinny? Don't, don't, don't you know that you're ugly? Uh, don't you know that your hair is nappy? You can't cook, you can't clean. What make you think you can get somebody that's better than me. And, and on the way out the door, Cecilia said something while she was walking down the stairs, getting ready to get in the car after Albert chased her out the house. She looked back at Albert standing on the porch and said, Albert, you know what? Come to think of it, I may be skinny. I, I, I may be ugly. My, my, my hair may be nappy, but, but Albert, there's got to be something special about me because in all of that, I'm still here. And is there anybody in this room that's got a silly type of faith that says, I may have messed up sometimes. I, I may have fell short a few times. I, I may have done some things wrong, but there's still some anointing on my life because after all I've been through, I still got my jaw. Shake your neighbor by the hand. Shake it like you're going to break it and look at him and say, neighbor, I know I'm dressed up tonight. Uh, tell him I know I look good today, uh, but there was a day I didn't look as good uh, as I look right now. Uh, but through it all, uh, I learned to trust in G. And there are about 35 people in this room that can shout because life has not been easy, but I'm praising God because I'm still here. Millions didn't make it, but I'm one of the ones that did. High five somebody say I'm still here. The tax says tell somebody else you got too much work to do to be walking around with a snake on your hand. You got to learn to shake it off so that God can get some glory out of your life. I find somebody and say, I'm shaking it off so that I can praise God the way I was supposed to. Good night, good night, church. But the Bible says that when, 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 when Paul shook the snake off, the Bible says that after he shook the snake off, King Publius, his daddy was in the room sleeping. His daddy was in the room sick. And the Bible says that when daddy got sick, when daddy needed help, when daddy needed some assistance, the Bible says that they called on Paul. And the Bible says that Paul laid his hands on him and daddy was healed. Oh, shucks. Y'all miss the text. The Bible says that Paul laid hands on the daddy and the daddy was healed. I'm sorry tonight, but Bishop, isn't it interesting that at the beginning of the story, the same hand that got bit in the first place was the same hand that got some power. Shake somebody else. Shake them one more time. I got a close in here tonight. But on my way, shake them out of hand. See if you can pull them off that pew and say, neighbor, this is why you gotta shake the devil off. There's somebody in your family. There's somebody in your church. There's somebody in your neighborhood that needs that hand because there's power in that hand. There's an anointing in that hand. Look at somebody. Look at somebody. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I don't know 